So uh, this week, uh, we have a scientist from in silico medicine uh, that's actually helping us go through some of these molecules that were generated using an artificial intelligence program. Uh, so today, me and Mike are going to be exploring these uh, structures and actually going through and looking at ways how we might even try to optimize them. Yeah, Steve, it's great to be here today and, and great to have Bogdan with us from in silico medicine. I mean, in silico medicine, is one of the top artificial intelligence companies working in drug discovery today. And so it's great to have Bogdan here. Bogdan, would you uh, like to introduce yourself? Uh, yes, thank you very much, Mike, Steve, for um, um, this kind of type of session for uh, uh, VR. And uh, thank you for the opportunity to present our molecules from in silicon medicine. And we're going to publish to a new um, uh, short um, uh, <clears throat> article for a 6W63 uh, uh, crystal structure based uh, generation. Uh, so we are going to present some uh, representative examples for five molecules from this. Uh, manuscript. So, so Bogdan uh, doesn't have virtual reality. Uh, so Mike and I are in VR. Um, I'm on my desktop on a Rift. Uh, Mike's on a Quest. And then um, Bogdan is actually joining us via video call. Uh, this this big protein structure that we see here, uh, this is the uh, SARS-CoV-2 main protease. Um, and what we could see here is the active center, this nice pocket. And this is the area that their drugs are targeting. This is amazing, Bogdan. How does your how does your uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning make the actual molecules? We are applying uh, in, uh, in in silicon medicine uh, several approach to generate molecules. So here we uh, have applied uh, integrated approach, ligand based and pocket based. We call it some kind of mapping of binding site. From the ligand-based approach, we use uh, several pharmacophoric features and shape features. The perspective of binding site, we use uh, the optimization of interaction with uh, uh, pocket. You know, it is, these five molecules are just such beautiful fits into the pocket. Steve, do you want to walk us around the molecule a little bit and show us some of the interactions that, that pop yeah. up? Yeah, definitely. Um, so with this one in particular, uh, we can see that there's some like weak hydrogen bonds forming here, uh, a little bit on this uh, histamine 163, a little bit right here. Uh, Bogdan, I, I wonder if you could tell us um, what restrictions you might have put on your molecules as far as physical chemical properties go. Uh, you know, how, how large did you allow them to go? So we restrict um, the molecular weight um, of molecules for this particular generation. Uh, um, it was um, uh, it should not uh, exceed it uh, 750 uh, deltons, and uh, that should be no less than 380 uh, in the terms of molecular weight. So it should uh, have. Uh, at least one um, hydrogen bond donor. Uh, it should have um, no less than two hydrogen bond acceptors. Um, and uh, it has uh, also restriction for a uh, lock P um, and uh, the number of uh, oxygens, the number of nitrogens, um, topological uh, polar surface area as well it um, should not uh, be less than 60. So uh, for, for sure we are applying some restrictions on um, for generating molecules. Steve just pulled up a feature in Nanome where we can quickly look at the some of the chemical properties of each one of these ligands and and you know put them in in one uh, place and so when we had looked at this we noticed that uh, you know, they were between, say, 400 and 500 molecular weight. So we figured that you would put some constraint down there. And what I would say is a medicinal chemist, all of five of these molecules look like they could be drugs. Uh, when I look at them a little bit closer, I see some things that I might suggest minor changes, uh, either for things that I think might make a difference in 
metabolic stability or might make a molecule easier to make. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think these are, are wonderful starting points. Yeah, I mean, so for me, for instance, um, if I look here at this molecule, I see an ester in the middle. And medicinal chemists mm -hmm. will, will often avoid esters because they can be hydrolytically and enzymatically unstable. I'm not saying that this one will be, uh, but it's something that we may commonly do to consider an amide here. And, and amides can also be metabolically unstable, uh, but they tend to be more stable than esters. Uh, and if you could get away with the sulfonamide here, and then over here, you see this has a double bond here, I would change that one to a single bond and then the two next to it to double bonds to make a, the, the pyridone. So very nice how you're changing that. <laughs> well, it, yeah, it's, it's easy to do in here with the uh, MedChem tool that Steve is using uh, that he can you know quickly change. And what's nice is that it minimizes the structure in in real time as we as we look at it. The machine learning built in to have this trifluoromethyl here. Um, and we see that in more than one molecule. So I thought uh, that really stood out to me uh, as is uh, something that was designed to fit in that little sub pocket. It's really amazing to see uh, that these were designed using artificial intelligence, using machine learning, and they fit really beautifully in the pocket. Uh, can you align all these uh, structures together to that? Uh... <laughs> Uh, several. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. As you can <laughs> see, uh, that uh, uh, three fluoromethyl groups, as well as uh, isopropyl group from uh, 188, are just interacting together, uh, aligning together, and all the structures possess uh, the hydrogen bonds, except or interact with histidine uh, 163. I think uh, it's very important to see that this scaffold hoping um, uh, conception works well uh, to design different molecules, but uh, they all share the same uh, uh, pharmacophoric and shape features. So, um, uh, and it's it's also will it's also applied by our uh, AI module. Uh, so, um, we believe that it has some kind of big, big future for scaffold hopping using AI. I really like the point you made about scaffold hopping, Bogdan, that we can see here's your hydrophobic group down here on a number of molecules, and here are the hydrogen bond acceptor donor pairs with the histidine, and yet you have very different scaffolds in the middle that are orienting those groups in the exact same positions. And that gives you a lot of room to, uh, to change physical chemical properties, to make things possibly easier to synthesize, also to possibly build the rigidity in that will display those with a scaffold that'll give you even better activity. So it's, it's a really beautiful example of that scaffold hopping. Yeah, and maybe we can just review just all the sites where we see some good hydrogen bonds. So it looks like four out of five had some uh, you know, weak hydrogen bonding activity uh, on this particular residue. And then we have also another uh, good one happening with actually all five of them and one precise hydrogen bond in the blue happening over here. Uh, we could see over on the histidine 163, we have two precise hydrogen bonds forming as well as uh, a few weak ones there. So uh, yeah, so today uh, we got to review all the uh, in silico medicine uh, chemicals that they just are releasing on their newest batch of updates here. Your uh, uh, facilities are just great. So VR, I think it's the best idea uh, to understand how the molecules can interact. Uh, thanks so much, Bogdan, for joining us via video. Thank and going you. Over all Thank the you for a great opportunity. Thank you. Yeah, and thanks, Mike, for, for giving your expert uh, MedChem advice on the in silico molecules. Thank you. It's a pleasure to work with you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone.